Police arrived to investigate an alarm sounded at Nugene Technology Incorporation. Upon arrival, a broken window was discovered, as well as the body of the CEO of the company, I am Genus. The crime scene was immediately secured, and you and your forensic team were called in to collect evidence for DNA testing. Searching the scene, you discover the following pieces of evidence. Strands of hair, skin cells from under the victim's nails, blood, a piece of ripped blue cloth, shards of broken glass. Some of the physical evidence recovered in this case is ideal for using DNA fingerprinting technology, though over 99% of all the 3 billion nucleotides in the human genome are similar. There are certain areas that vary from one individual to the next. One way in which these areas vary is that there are short sequences of DNA that repeat a different number of times in different people. These variations, or polymorphisms, are what make DNA fingerprinting possible. When our DNA is examined at these regions, we see a unique pattern, a DNA fingerprint. By using molecular tests, we can identify DNA fingerprints from the victim and suspects, and compare these to fingerprints of DNA from physical evidence left at the crime scene. In an actual DNA fingerprint, normally two bands are seen for each segment of DNA analyzed. This is because a copy of DNA is inherited from each of your parents. Since this procedure examines highly variable regions of the genome, each parent will most likely have a different variation, hence two bands. Two techniques will be used to analyze the DNA and detect variations in the sequence. RFLP Restriction Fragment Length Polymorphism DNA is cut into pieces with restriction enzymes, and the resulting fragments are separated by sides via gel electrophoresis. PCR polymerase chain reaction. Many millions of copies of a specific DNA segment are generated. Because of the variability in the human genome, the DNA fingerprints generated by both of these techniques will vary between individuals. Police investigators have interviewed witnesses and viewed security tapes to come up with four suspects. First suspect, Scarlett Genus, wife of deceased. Second suspect, Jane Elliott, founder and CEO of Genicorp. Third suspect, Ted Smithson, graduate student and part-time research assistant of NewGene. Fourth suspect, Clyde Beacom, custodial engineer at NewGene Technology. Each of these four suspects will have blood drawn so their DNA fingerprint can be compared to DNA from the evidence samples you will be testing. Part 1. Evidence Collection Now that you have examined the cry scene and recovered all physical evidence left at the site, lab work will begin in earnest. First, read the articles on your office computer to get up to speed on DNA testing. Also, review the suspect information in your desk drawer that has been gathered by police detectives. These files will be updated as more information is obtained. Next, go to the evidence room to determine what items are suitable for DNA analysis. Give me a call on your desk phone if you need advice.
Scarlet Genus, wife of deceased, notes, Mrs. Genus showed little grief at news of husband's death. Jane Elliott, founder and CEO of Ginkorps, notes, witnesses heard Elliott threaten the deceased a week prior to the murder. Ted Smithson, graduate student and research assistant, notes, Smithson and the deceased had a heated argument the day before the murder. Clyde Beckham, custodial engineer, New Gene Technology Incorporation, notes, seven complaints about Beckham's service were found on the deceased's desk.